Greetings everybody. This innocuous looking plain white box holds a brand new pen which just came on the market and I'm going to do a unboxing style review for you all today where we're going to unbox the pen and you're going to see uh, my first impressions sort of on the fly. So this pen is the Pen BBS Model 355 and this particular variant is the clear glass demonstrator version. Um, this pen has a very, very cool filling mechanism, which hopefully will uh, be exciting to see. So we're going to go through the whole thing and um, see how I like it and hopefully see how you folks all like it. So again, this is a model number is the 355 and this is the this particular variant uh, color scheme, etc. is the 6-16SM variant of the pen PBS pen. So just as a plain white sleeve. We'll take that off and reveal a typical looking pen BBS box. It sort of has a little bit of a faux leather effect and the pen BBS logo sort of subtly embossed on the lid. It has a magnetic catch lid on the front. Very nice box. Let's just open it up and what we have, we have our pen encased in plastic. And we'll just take this off to see if there's anything else, instructions or anything like that. Nope, nothing. So we literally have a pen in a box, which is fine. So there we go, that's the pen. So let's put the box aside for a minute because we're interested in the pen, not the box. So there's our pen in a plastic wrapper. Let's zoom in a bit so we can get the whole thing in. Um, we'll open it from its encased sleeve and right away, um, I can see I'm going to like this one at least aesthetically. It has these sort of little chunky bits of acrylic on either end, which I'm a big fan of. The um, uh, Opus 88 has these, on a, albeit on a much larger scale, but I do like the looks of that. So what we have is a typical pen BBS sword style clip. Um, let's see around the cap band. What does it say? It says pen BBS and 355 and that's it. Uh, nice, you can see there is a, um, not does not appear to be an actual inner cap. It seems that the inside of the cap is machined to act as an inner liner that goes against the edge of the, um, of the, um, of the section. So that, that seems to be pretty nice. Um, let's uh, do a little size comparison before we do anything else. So here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. And as we can see, it is a bit bigger than either of these, but just a bit. Okay. Um, now let's get a weight on this pen. Again, normally I have all this done in advance, but we're literally doing this on the fly as we speak. So we'll do a weight on this pen. And the weight of the pen is 28 grams. That sounds more like it. So decent weight, not particularly heavy, but a, uh, but a decent weight on the pen. So um, here we are. We have our size. We have our weight. We looked at the clip. We looked at the cap band. Now let's open it up and take a look. So let's see. We have, uh, let's first check to see if it posts. And it does. Oh, that posts very nicely, too. I like that. Uh, doesn't doesn't seem to be terribly back weighted. It's certainly long enough to use unposted, but as I, you probably know if you watch some of my other videos, I'm a big fan of posting, so I would probably post this pen. Um, let's take a look at the nib. So this looks like a very, very nice nib, different than other pen BBS nibs. This is a medium. It's got a giant letter M, very stylistically engraved. It says, Pen BBS, and then it says, looks like it says 2005 Shanghai, China, which I find interesting. I don't know if this nib was from something made in 2005 or that's supposed to be a model number or what. So I find that's what it says on the pen is kind of interesting. There's some Chinese characters on the very edge of the section next to the next to the um, pen as well. Um, so 
Now let's look at this filling mechanism, which is what I think everyone wants to see, me as well. So this is a looks a little bit like a vacuum filler, but it is not. It is basically a bulk filler. So we're going to turn the knob at the end here. We're going to draw back the rod. We're then going to turn to engage the piston. Oop. Am I turning? The, oh no, I'm turning the wrong way. We're going to turn to engage the piston, and then we're going to push the piston down. Oh, that, that's a little tough. Okay, it's a little sticky at first. First time use, I guess. Um, we're going to pull the push the piston down. We're then going to draw all the ink back, just like you would a normal piston. But the difference is that piston is going to stay at the end there, and we're just going to unscrew the rod. And we're going to go all the way in and then screw it back down. So basically, it works very much like a piston-filled pen, except the, all the mechanism that would normally be sitting behind the piston to drive the piston, that, all that space is not necessary. Um, it just, uh, it's, not, it's, not, um, it's not necessary uh, uh, at all. So let me just get another pen to show you folks for an example. So here is a Wing Sung. 618, which is also a transparent piston filled pen, similar size, etc. Here's the piston, and all this space from here all the way to the back of the pen is taken up with the mechanism to drive the piston. So, in this pen here, all this space that normally would be taken up by the mechanism to drive the piston is um, available for ink. So let's get some measurements so we can do some calculations as to how much ink this would hold. So I'm going to unscrew the section here. Just put that aside for a moment. And I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to get a interior measurement on the um, on the, on the, uh, on the ink chamber. Let me get my calipers out. Again, apologies for taking the time to do this, but again, normally this would be something we would, I would have all lined up to do um, uh, in advance. So I'm going to measure the inner diameter of the ink chamber here, and we're gonna see that that is 0.35, oh, I have it in inches, we don't want to do that. That is, we're going to 8.97, we're going to say that's 9 millimeters. So we're going to say, we're going to write that down. So that is 9 millimeters on the ink chamber. And then we're going to need to measure the diameter of the rod because we're going to want to subtract the volume of the rod so we can get a good measurement. And that is, um, Let's just call that three point, we'll round that, we'll call that 3.1 millimeters. So that's minus 3.1 millimeter. Okay, so we're going to save those for a little later when we do some more, um, when we do some calculations on the ink volume. Okay, I'm going to put the Let's just put the section back on, by the way, just let's take a look at this here. There does appear to be a nice O-ring right there, which was nicely done. We'll put the section back on there, and you can see the O-ring like compressed against the sides of the barrel, which is pretty nice, indicates we've got a good seal all around. So, um, if this filling mechanism looks familiar, it is very much like a Conid bulk filler. Obviously, the Conid doesn't use simple threads there. It has sort of some sort of elaborate hook and catch mechanism to sort of move the the piston in and out, but um, philosophically, it's um, uh, 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 quite, uh, quite similar. So, I guess the next thing is, let's see this filling mechanism in actual action and see how that works. So, I'm going to ink it up with um, sort of nice bright red ink would look good. So, we're going to ink it up with Waterman Audacious Red. So, let's try that out right now and see how, see how that works. Um, again, never inked this pen up before. This is the first, first time go around. 
and I'm going to try to hold this at an angle so we can all see this guy in action as we ink it. So first thing we're going to do is immerse and then we're going to unscrew the cap and then we're going to basically drag our piston up and as we can see we got a pretty good fill there let's try a second one just to make sure we are getting our feed saturated and all that but that's pretty much filling up the entire barrel there I'm gonna do it one more time just because I can but there we go that is a goodly goodly amount of ink um, so now what we're gonna do is well first thing what we're gonna do is close our ink bottle before we do anything else move that aside okay to free it and then we'll push that back down and turn it down perfect uh, I'm gonna clean some of this ink off my hands and then we're gonna see how this pen writes because after all pens were meant to write as they say okay folks what we're writing with here for the very first time is a pen BBS model 355 oh, let me adjust that a little bit and uh, we'll call this the bulk filler version so this and this is a medium steel nib and um, this is a good nice true medium this is yes it's an Asian nib but this is definitely it is a little on the fine side but it's 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 a medium nib for sure so it's it's um, I'm happy with the line width it is um, it is um, most definitely a smooth nib and it's most definitely a wet nib so that's uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this pen writes um, um, definitely, you know, it, I, th this is a different nib than in other pen BBS pens. I, I have a few other pen BBSs and this is, this is, this is not, uh, the same nib. It's got a different feel to it. It is fairly stiff though. So, um, I doubt that we're going to have much in the way of flex or line variation. Yeah, there's nothing to be given to, to be gained here from flex. So, so don't expect any kind of flex really, but that's fine. They don't market it as a flex pen. Um, but it is, does write quite, quite nicely. Uh, and I'm very happy with it. Particularly the wetness of it. It's a very nice wet pen. Um, very nice um, and um, I just like the way this looks it's a smart looking pen I like the acrylic chunkiness there and there obviously it's got a cool filling mechanism um, before we use up too much ink let's get a calculation now on the ink size so let's see how let's see how um, I'm gonna measure the height of the column of ink here. So I'm gonna to need to kind of stand this up. Let's pull the camera out a little bit. Oop. I'm gonna to need to stand this up vertically here and get a measurement. And So that is 36 millimeters. Okay, so we have two calculations to do. So first the volume of the ink chamber. So just to remind everybody, the formula for the volume of the cylinder is pi radius squared h. So um, the radius we had a nine millimeter uh, 
we had a nine millimeter diameter. So that's equals a 4.5 millimeter radius. So let's get our old trusty 1982 Hewlett Packard calculator out. And let's see what we come up with. So we've got um, radi uh, radius uh, 4.5 and we're going to square that and then we're going to multiply it by we're going to multiply that by pi um, and we're then going to multiply that by our height which is 36 um, um, millimeters. So that gives us um, 2,290 cubic millimeters. And now we have to subtract the volume of the rod, which is going to be much smaller, so that we, we said the rod was 3.1 millimeters in diameter. So the radius so is 3.1. We're going to divide that by 2. That gives us a 1.55 radius. We're going to square that. We're going to multiply that by pi. And then we're going to multiply that by the height, which is 36. Which gives us 270, let's say 272. And so... We're going to take our 2,290 cubic millimeters of, air, of volume and subtract the 272 cubic millimeters for the rod. That gives us a grand total of 2,018 cubic millimeters or 2.018 milliliter of ink. So well over two milliliters of ink, which is, uh, well, well, a bit over, plus I'm not counting any ink that's sitting in the section. So it's definitely north of two milliliters of ink. So it's, suffice to say it's a, it's a substantial amount of ink um, uh, in here. So that um, is that for the volume, ink, ink volume, in case you were are interested. So I think this is a very cool filling mechanism. Certainly holds a lot of ink. Certainly is great if you have a nice colored ink like this. It certainly is a great, great way of showing off uh, the uh, color of the ink. Probably the the high, other than an eyedropper pen, uh, a filling mechanism like this is probably going to give you uh, some of the highest ink capacities you can. You may say a vac filler would be similar, and a vac filler would be, but the difference with a vac filler is the vac filler has to have a smaller inside diameter uh, of the ink chamber because it has to widen at the end to allow the vacuum seal to break. So it has to, by definition, be at least a bit narrower in some point. So could you make a vac filler that has this capacity? Certainly. But um, this is um, this is definitely a cool filling mechanism. Um, I like it a lot. And um, 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 it's it's definitely a, a cool new entrant from Pen BBS. I think they did a nice, nice job with this pen. So I would I'm going to definitely give this pen a, a big thumbs up. I really, really like it. Uh, really like it quite a bit. So um, hopefully we covered this pen quite thoroughly. Let's talk about this ink now uh, just a bit. So this is, um, as I showed you folks earlier, this ink is Waterman Audacious Red. So this is basically Waterman's standard red ink. Um, the closest ink I have to this one would be something like Diamond Poppy Red. That's actually, in my opinion, a slightly redder ink. That's just a plain, very vanilla red. This red, um, in my opinion, is a little bit more orangey 
than that red. Um, and I know I'm splitting hairs here. This is not an orange ink. It's definitely a red ink, but it's not quite as in your face flaming red as say the diamond poppy red. It definitely is more of a, I, I'm just saying a very, 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 very dark orange ink rather than a pure, pure red, but a red nonetheless. So um, again, it's a Waterman ink, it's a well-behaved ink. So if you want a red to put in, say, a vintage pen, a piston filling pen that's hard to clean, a sack filling pen, etc., the Waterman inks are always a very, very good choice because they are nice, nice, safe inks to use. Um, and I like them quite a bit. Uh, this pen writes quite wet, so I would expect to see a little bit of this um, uh, smearing here on on some of the scribble scrabble the lettering that I did is not smearing at all on this rhodia paper so this is um, uh, this is pretty well behaved again given that this pen is writing uh, pretty much on the wet side and um, here you can see it's not bleeding through or anything like that nice nice ink um, I like it a lot and I think uh, if you have a nice transparent demonstrated pen like this it really kind of shows it off quite quite well. Well, um, this was certainly a exciting episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm curious as to if you like the video and I also like everyone's thoughts on this pen. It's a brand new pen um, and um, it's sure to have people would have opinions on it. So and I'd like to hear yours. So that will do it for this episode. As always, if you liked it, please subscribe and hit the little upvote button. That's always nice. And as always, have a good day. Bye-bye.